Good afternoon, guys. This is Tina. How are you doing today? Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you the bean life cycle in spring. As we know, the bean factory control the creation and destruction of the beans, right? And uh, sometimes we still want to add some custom code. And the spring do provide lots of callbacks which you can insert our own code and it can be categorized in two groups the first group is called the post initialization callbacks the second one is pre-destroy callbacks okay but uh, what I can tell you is we have this way this way this way several ways to do that but before I tell you we have those ways I want to introduce you the bean life cycle because after you understand the life cycle then you will understand why we have those ways to do that uh, that's the main thing of uh, this video we let, look at the stages when spring created the beans for us it will go through certain stages and we will take a look at okay so let's start uh, suppose uh, now uh, the first one we have to take uh, the first one yes it's uh, I want to use in black yes uh, the first one we want to take a look at uh, being uh, uh, creation okay life cycle and for destroy we have another life cycle if this video is too long we will break up into another video okay so suppose uh, here, uh, let's create a class, okay? Class customer. Uh, let's do here. And then here we have a private uh, string, first name. And by this one, by default, it has a default constructor, right? And then in our XML file, spring.xml, we do like this way, bin id equals cust, okay? Class equals package.customer. Okay, and now Spring has to do what? Spring has to, when we using new class pass uh, application content, Spring we're trying to initialize the beans for you, right? So in this case, we only initialize one customer for you. So what's the stages? Let's move on, okay, stages. First, instantiate. Okay, instantiate, okay. Instantiate, the, this one is, uh, if we configure like this way, the bin ID, the one, it's gonna call default constructor. Okay, it's gonna call default constructor, but here, if you have a constructor, the property, the tag here, constructor, that I tag here, then that one will call, call, customize the constructor. So be aware of that, okay? So next one is another state called populate, uh, or populate properties. And this one is doing what? Suppose, let me using another color, okay? Suppose here you have a property and have a name equals first name. Okay, value equals your favorite name, Tina. <laughs> okay, so first name is a name, property name, this one, first name. So popular properties will call setters to uh, set the value, to, to set value uh, for two properties. P-E-R-T-I-E-S. Got it? 
So for the set, if you have property here, you must have a setters because it's gonna call setters to set a Tina to the first name. Okay, this is this step, and uh, for the other steps, most of the time probably we are not deal with them unless you do have a customized uh, the code before. So Spring has a lot of uh, interface called something aware, and. Uh, as a Spring programmer, we rarely touch it, but uh, since we are talking about the bean life cycle, I want to introduce some of them which related to the bean life cycle, okay? The first one is called the bean name aware. And uh, bean name aware has an abstract method called the set bean name. So if you want to have your customized or do something with the bin name, in our case, the CUST, CUST here is going to be the value of the string passed. You can, what you can do is in the customer, in the customer, you can have here, you can implement bin name aware. Okay, after you implement the bin name aware, then you can implement this callback, then you can get the uh, bin name, then you can do something for that, okay? Uh, next one is the what? Next one is called the bin factory. Factory aware. And here has a bin factory. And here also will give you the bean factory. This bean factory here is the bean factory used to create this customer. Okay, so once you get a bean factory, you can do some actions like check the condition of the bean, like is a singleton or is a prototype or other things. How to do that? The same thing as before. Let me use this one, okay? You can continue implements. Uh, let me make it smaller, okay? You can implement bin factory aware, okay? Then you can uh, customize this callback, okay? The next one is called a bin, oh, sorry, not a bin, called the application context aware. And it also has one option method called a set application context. And here you also get the application context. Okay, I don't want to roll to the whole, okay. Okay. The same thing as this bean factory. This application context is the context which hold the bean. In this case, which is hold this customer bean. And if you want to do something with this application context, what you can do is continue to, uh, to, to implement. Uh, I'm using this color, okay? Continue if I'm using this color. This color, yeah. Why still this color? context aware okay you can you can also implement then you can uh, override this callback set application context okay and uh, we still have several stages to move on and the next one is what this one is a little bit uh, different which is called the bean post processor And uh, bean post processor is an interface, and it has uh, two methods you can over, you can provide implementation. One is called uh, pre uh, initialization, okay. and the other one is a post initialization. But this bean post processor is different. 
which mean is different from a uh, bean factory aware and application context aware. This bean post process interface, you have to create another class, then implement that. Okay, and uh, for those bean factory bean name aware, they are only applied. Those callbacks are only applied to customer, right? But for bean post processor, it's gonna apply for all the beans created for one, uh, one what, uh, one IOC container. And we're gonna have another uh, video just to talk about the bean post processor. Okay. So after that, there's another one which is called. Uh, uh, called what? Oh, called initialization. E, e, how, how do I spell? Initializing. Uh, initializing bin. And uh, this one is an interface and it has a, a one abstract method called the after uh, property set. And then you can do some customized code here. How to use that one? Still, you can go back to this customer in the customer here. Here. Let me you, you let me go and click here. Here you can continue to E. Why cannot? Why cannot? Click here. And then here we were using, oh my god, hey, okay, let me just use this one. This one you can implement initializing bin. Okay, and then you can override this after property set. Then you can uh, reset the property. Suppose here first name is Tina, you can reset it to XING, okay? And uh, the other one, ee, oh my god, I hate this. Okay, the other one, yes, what? The other one, which is the best solution, okay? Custom init method. This one is the best solution. The reason for that is, you can see, when you want to using those bin aware or post processors, you are tight. You you this way. Your customer, this uh, uh, domain model, are tight, coupled with uh, Spring APIs, which are not uh, good. And the other one is using customer init method. How to do that is here. We can go come here. Let's using another color. Here you can have a public uh, void. You can have a custom. A custom init method okay just define a normal method here and when you create a bin here you can specify the init method equals custom init which is the method name okay okay this way then here you can write your customized uh, code here Okay, this is the best solution compared with others. Okay, and uh, after you have the customer init, there's a last stage, which is still what the bin post processor. Remember this one, bin post processor. It has two methods. One is a pre initialization. The other one is called a post. Uh, initialization method and after this state is due your bin is ready for use okay so this is the stages of the uh, bin life cycle which is uh, this one is actually the bin creation life cycle which spring has uh, certain stages it will go through so if we want to add some customized code during the bin creation, you have uh, several ways to do. Actually, it's uh, four ways. First way, you override, okay? You implement those uh, aware interface. 
interface interface in interface okay interface you can aware though uh, you can implement those bin name uh, aware bin factory aware application context aware those interface then you can do something in the callbacks this is the first way the second way you probably already see here bin post processor we will talk about it later and uh, in this video i'm gonna show you this way okay here initialization bin okay in the initial Lizing bin interface you can implement you can implement this one and then you can do override this after property set method you can add your customized code and the third one yes this one okay custom init method okay how to do that it's like you create a method then you register that when you create the bin, okay? And uh, when while we do custom init method, this is a uh, one way. And there's another way is using annotation called uh, uh, post construct and uh, pre destroy. This one is uh, for the destroy. Uh, so let's don't do this one, okay? Don't let's. Uh, Let's remove this one because this part is talking about the creation. This post construct is the same as a custom init method, but this one is using annotation. This one uses uh, explicit uh, configuration. And the last one is uh, you all write those uh, bin uh, post processors. So this is uh, the five ways you want to add extra code custom code custom code uh, during the creation time okay and uh, i'm gonna show you uh, the hands-on experience and uh, give you a demo how to do that in next video okay so anyway for this video we talk about uh, bean creation life cycle uh, when Spring creates the beans for you, it actually goes through several stages, which is under the hood. But it's better to understand before, uh, understand the creation, then you can, if you have something happened, you know where to debug, okay? So that's it for this video. And uh, if you want to learn some uh, hands-on experience, please watch my next video. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.